in the heart of Guilty Gear universe, amidst the cacophony of crusades and the clash of ideologies, there is a man who stands at the root of all. Many have cursed his existence, many want to end his life for revenge, but nobody knew what his goal was. He is an enigma, a man of many names, but often known by just one. That man, Asuka R. Kreutz, a brilliant scientist, a genius magician, and the architect of a scientific revolution that drastically changed the face of humanity's existence, and close friend to Frederick Bulsara and Arya Hell. His most groundbreaking creation, the Gears, ignited a catastrophe, pushing the world to the brink of annihilation and leading to the events of Guilty Gear, and to the war between humans and Gears that continued for a century known as Crusades, leading to the death of billions of people. With Guilty Gear's 25th anniversary, Asuka R. Kreutz joined the roster of Guilty Gear's tribe and will be the guest of today's video. I'm Arcade Naut here and today I will talk about the story, the evolution of that man Asuka R. Kreutz, who is known as the devil creator of justice and the gear maker. Asuka is being known as the main cause of all events within Guilty Gear universe and before we talk about Asuka's actions in each and every Guilty Gear title, we need to know about the background events first. He was born sometime in the 20th century, Asuka experienced the event that led to the use of magic in Guilty Gear universe, an event that is known as the Dawn of Revival. It is a historical event of a great importance that occurred in 1999 in which machines of all types began to malfunction due to a mysterious entity. It led to a worldwide ban on technology and eventually culminated in the Age of Magic. Dawn of Revival was prophesied by a mysterious man known as the Original, saying that this calamity would shake the very foundations of human society. In order to prevent this calamity, he sought disciples and Asuka was one of them. To be precise, the best and the closest of the five. Before the original vanished to an alternate dimension that is called as the backyard in Guilty Gear universe, he warned his five disciples about an omnipotent being that is known as the Universal Will, a mysterious entity created by the original in the backyard, directly responsible for the Dawn of Revival and other big crises in the world of Guilty Gear. I know it might be hard to follow all of these names and the terms but I will come back and talk all about these events when I make a video about the original, currently known as Happy Chaos, and even when I make a video about Soul Bad Guy at some point. The vital points that we need to know are that Asuka began to study magic under the original and learns about this dangerous yet enigmatic entity known as the Universal Will. The five disciples of the original, including Asuka, waited for their master's return. However, with each passing day, they began searching for a way to stop the Universal Will on their own. Each disciple had their own methods, their own way, and Asuka's way was educate the people and help them to evolve. As an extraordinary scientist and also as a gifted magician with unparalleled intellect, Asuka began his journey with noble intentions. He completed biology studies in his youth and played a part in completing the theory of magical science, specializing in the field of bioinformatics. During his scientific researches and studies, he met with Frederick Bulsara and Arya Hell in college, and the three of them quickly became friends and started to work together. Along with his colleagues Frederick Bulsara, who would later on be known as Soul Bad Guy, and Arya Hell, who would become the mother of all gears, Justice, and later on be known as Jacko, three of them embarked on a daring scientific pursuit. Their shared vision, Gears, a fusion of biological entities and technology designed to herald a new era of human progress, a progress that would prevent Universal Will's damage. In 2014, 
Asuka was assigned to the Ecosystem Evolution Project to supervise the medical research and only a year later he became the director, while improving the gear project alongside with Frederick and Arya. During their studies and experiments, it is stated that Asuka learned a lot from Frederick. They often discuss philosophy and daily life talks, since Asuka probably lacked the social skills and the viewpoint that Frederick had, and sometimes Asuka helped Frederick to notice Arya's love and care for him. During that time, Asuka completed the gear cell theory, managing to stabilize the cells infused with magic. However, he was afraid that his research would turn into weapons for the nations. And after some time, their work was exploited, leading to the advent of gears, powerful bioorganic weapons that plunged the world into a devastating conflict known as the Crusades, that would last for a century, causing a war between the mankind and the gears. The military soon intervened and Asuka was forced to work for them. Out of desperation, Asuka convinced the terminally ill Arya to cryosleep and planted one of the cell seeds of the gear project in Frederick, restructuring him into a gear while gambling for his friend to survive. Here, Asuka lies to Frederick, leaving him to die, causing Frederick to swore revenge to turn into the monster that Asuka wanted from the start. With these events, Asuka went missing, causing the gear project to be halted, but I need to say that this event might sound a bit forced for a lot of you. Asuka might seem like an enigmatic, regretful figure, but at first he was the mysterious villain or rather the antagonist of this story, but his storytelling changed with Guilty Gear Exart. We might say that Asuka took a big gamble here to save Frederick and Arya to keep them alive somehow by turning them into gears or turning them into monsters and these actions his selfish decisions are also the root of his regret his path to redemption basically frederick who will be known as soul bad guy during the crusades against the gears transformed into a gear against his own will and bore a deep-seated grudge against asuka for what he did to him and his beloved Arya. their relationship was tinged with bitterness a testament to their shared history and served as a personal catalyst in Asuka's path to redemption. Despite Saul's animosity, Asuka harbored no ill will towards him, seeing him as a mirror reflecting his own failures. Saul became a constant reminder of the need to atone for his past, fueling Asuka's quest for redemption. In 2042, the Gear Project was greenlit once again by United States. And based on Asuka and Frederick's research, they were able to generate and activate their own gear prototype sometime later. To prevent the weaponization of the gears, Asuka joined the project under Elias, possibly as his most known title, That Man. Secretly, he wanted to build a collective information system that would give orders to all of gears, aiming to deweaponize all gears by a single order, and for that, Asuka created justice while transforming Arya from her cryosleep as the basis of the commander gear. However, this plan of Asuka would later become his second biggest regret. There was something that he forgot to calculate, what his mentor, the original, warned him years ago. The universal will, the omnipotent being that possess a threat to the world. During Justice's activation test in 2074, the universal will intervened justice from inside the backyard. Using her DNA as a link to materialize, universal will mutated the people of Japan into gears, the victim suddenly bursting in agony, transforming into massive, unrecognizable living bomb creatures. Of course this event was a nightmare for Japan and characters like Baiken and Anji Mito, and possibly Asuka as well. He was so afraid that the earth would no longer be a safe place he switched justice over to manual override and fired a maximum output gamma ray at Japan, completely obliterating the country in an instant. This day would later on be known as the Black Sunrise. Asuka, Frederick and Arya's noble intent was twisted, exploited and ultimately morphed into a terrifying nightmare. Their creations were weaponized, haunting Asuka for centuries. Deeply affected by this event, Arya forgot her own identity, she ran berserk, 
but somehow Asuka was able to save half of her soul along with her fragmented memories. Justice announced herself to be a self-aware organism, took command of all gears across the globe and declaring war against the humanity, starting the Hundred Year War Crusade. Asuka, as the creator of Justice, was believed to have intentionally turned justice against humanity and, of course, was labeled as a war criminal. Nobody actually knew who to blame, so Asuka, or let's use his nickname this time, that man, here was the perfect target, and Asuka was struck with profound guilt, reviled for his creation, the world he swore to protect was in flames of war. Yet within him, another flame was kindled. Asuka was determined to fix the catastrophic consequences of his actions. From here, Asuka Arkroyds began a remarkable evolution, shaping the narrative arc of the Guilty Gear series. However, we are still behind the events of the first title, these are still known as the background stories of Guilty Gear universe. Haunted by his past, Asuka operated behind the scenes, subtly influencing the upcoming events. His machinations were incorrect, his methods nuanced. Although his presence wasn't always over, his influence was felt through the Guilty Gear universe. His actions were driven by remorse and responsibility, it began to steer the course of the narrative. Unfortunately, there is not a single Guilty Gear game that shows the events of the Crusades and during this hundred year war, Asuka disappeared. During that time, it is said that he was working to free Arya from Justice's grasp. At unknown point, before the events of Guilty Gear X, Asuka met an immortal man called Raven. As being immortal and more than thousand years old, Raven felt an interesting aura from Asuka and becomes his servant. Later on, alongside with Eno, who is the main antagonist of Guilty Gear XX and also Guilty Gear Strive. I believe I spoke a bit about Eno during my Zato 1 video, so be sure to check that out as well. And later on, he also created two Jekos, one to restore justice, her humanity, and one to make Eno human if she ever tries to reach her godhood. However, Asuka only completed the first Jeko unit. The very same Jekyll that we know from Guilty Gear Exart and Strife. And with that, I believe I was able to cover the background story of Asuka. However, we still have lots of character relations and events that will lead to the story of Guilty Gear Exart and also Guilty Gear Strife. Let's move on to the events of Guilty Gear X then, shall we? Behold, I already mentioned about the first Guilty Gear's plot in my Zato 1 video as Testament's goal to revive justice during the second Holy Order tournament. And at the end of the tournament, Soul Bad Guy was able to kill justice, meaning he killed the body of the woman he loved, Arya Hale. Asuka orders Raven to secure and delete the samples for justice's design since he still believes that mankind learned nothing from their mistakes and still seek power. And during the events of Guilty Gear X in year 2181, we learn about the existence of Dizzy, a self-reliant gear without Justice's control. After Raven's report, Asuka realizes that Dizzy is the daughter of Justice and quickly orders Raven to keep an eye on Dizzy without being detected. Without telling anybody, he realizes that she is yet another reason to be killed by Soul, since, you know, this is the daughter of Soul and Justice, before they turn into Gears. Asuka doesn't have much an influence to Guilty Gear's story during the events of Guilty Gear XX. The most important events that led to Guilty Gear's strive might be with Eno. Before all of these events, during the Crusade, the original Asuka's mentor discovers a young girl that has the potential to be a god. Sensing the threat this would cause the world, the original took away her human desires and half of her power leaving Eno only with her name. And Asuka, once discovering Eno and his mentor's doings, he promises a solution, a way to make her human again. And because of that, Eno focuses on serving Asuka, causing chaos to get Soul's attention. This was the first encounter of Soul Bad Guy and that man, after Asuka's so-called betrayal. Asuka stops the fight between Eno and Soul and warns him about the menace that is soon about to come. 
For disobeying his orders, Asuka detained Ino so that Ino would stop pursuing Sol. Asuka had bigger plans for Sol after all. Sol, bad guy with the flame of corruption, had the potential to stop all of this menace once and for all. Well, Guilty Gear 2 is not a fighting game, but it sure has really important story pieces, especially the reveal of Sin Kisk, the son of Dizzy and Kai Kisk, and the first Valentine attack to Illyrian Kingdom, leading to the event of Guilty Gear Sign. The events of Guilty Gear 2 is about Valentine, the living copy of Arya created by the Universal Will, trying to reach the cube, a structure built by Asuka located in the backyard. It stated that this cube is capable of manipulating information in the backyard that can influence the real world. During the events of Guilty Gear 2 Overture, Raven and Asuka appear before Sol and Sin Kisk, confirming their involvement in this incident. Asuka warns them about Backyard's pressure and challenges Sol there, to test his strength, I guess. I mean, Guilty Gear 2 is an action game, so Asuka appearing like that was an interesting boss battle. Shall I make a video about Guilty Gear 2 Overture in the future? Anyways, where was I? During the battle, Asuka apologizes and asks Sol to focus on stopping Valentine, child of the universal will, and wishes him to prevent Valentine from reaching the cube. During the ending scenes of Guilty Gear 2, Sol is stuck in the depths of the backyard after Valentine's death and as you can guess, Asuka approaches him to save his dear friend's life. He also warns Sol that this isn't end of the merciless apocalypse and tells him to live on, while Sol asks if Valentine was really Arya. However, here, Asuka's reply is quite cruel. So cruel that Sol vows to kill him. As Asuka reunites with Raven and laments that next time probably won't be this easy, he knows by the next time it would be either Asuka or Sol to put an end to this apocalypse. Raven expresses his concern that Sol may stand in their way again, but Asuka as usual wants to let history write in its own course. He wants to see how the events would unfold in the future, as he is also ready to accept the punishment, as he wants to fix every mistake he did in the past. As we move into the era of Guilty Gear Exart, Asuka's story takes on a new depth. His character, shrouded in ambiguity, starts to reveal its layers as he tries to correct his past mistakes, confronting the consequences of his actions, clash with old allies struggling to keep everything together while the world is torn apart by his creations. In October 29, the year 2187, Realm Metal Valentine declares a war against the world. To prevent any damage from happening, Asuka agrees to meet with Ino in the backyard and there, he receives a coded message from his mentor, the original. Asuka learns that what the conclave is after and how the universal will got everything in place. For Asuka, the revival of justice must be stopped at all cost and for that, he needed his old friend, Frederick's help. And as a deterrent for Justice's revival, he orders the awakening of the first Jekko unit, the unit he created years ago that would turn Justice into human once again. Right after these events, a former member of the Conclave, Kronos, finds Asuka and tells him the real identity of Universal Will, Ariels, the current leader of major religious institution called Sanctus Populi. During that talk, Kronos also decides to put an end to the history of bloodshed between humans and Gears by telling Sol everything. This was the moment that Sol would know the truth, that Asuka did not betray them and the Universal Will was a real enemy from the start. And to stop Justice from coming back to life and to apprehend Ariels, Asuka needed to do a ceasefire. Together with Jekko, Asuka meets with Sol, Kai and Leo Whitefang and there, Asuka tells everything he knew about the Universal Will. They all agreed to an uneasy alliance to stop Ariels from eradicating the humanity. The plan was to give Jekko the adequate power so that she could merge with Justice. 
However, as always, Asuka was only calculating the events like a scientist. He wasn't thinking about the emotions or the spontaneous decisions and the big factor that is known as Soul Bad Guy. During the end of Guilty Gear Exart, Ariels is defeated and Jekko is able to force the override Justice's consciousness and complete the merge. A part of Ariel's soul was now in Jekko, or we can even say Arya was restored after hundreds of years. Although this may sound like an happy ending, there was still unresolved tension between Asuka and Sol. Although Asuka thanked Sol and leaving Arya in his care, he still says that they must settle their score and for the first time in Guilty Gear Universe, he reveals his face. Shin. And on the contrast, Sol seeing his old friend's determination and accepting this challenge, finally calling him by his real name, Asuka R. Kreutz. After the events of Guilty Gear Exart, both Ino and Raven leaves Asuka's side. Ino learns that Asuka was only keeping her close to the threat she possessed and Raven tells Asuka that the preparations are nearly complete and Asuka will only have a half of a month to carry out his plans. However, Asuka wanted to part as friends, not as master and servant. They both thank each other as Asuka was making the final preparations to surrender himself to the US government, leading to the events of Guilty Gear Strife. Asuka surrenders himself to US government, he possesses no ill threat, he even informs the press, as we see Asuka being escorted to the White House by US President Vernon. During his escort, Asuka tells him about his aim, to take the Tome of Origin to a safe location. Once he's taken to the White House, where no magic can even enter from the outside, to raise at G4 the issue of eliminating relics from the Crusades, keeping the tome safe from anybody, and eliminating Soul Bad Guy from the world. With Justice gone, the biggest threat to the world would be Soul's own power, the Flame of Corruption. And although Soul saved the world a couple of times before, lots of nations other than Kingdom of Illyria saw Soul Bad Guy as a weapon and, of course, as a threat. However, Guilty Gear Strive's main antagonist this time is Eno. We see Eno entering the walls of Illyria, reaching Ariel's body to free something from her body. So here, if I were to take you guys back to the start of this video, I mentioned about the original, the first magician and Asuka's mentor, right? And how he was trapped in the backyard. Well, original is back, with a twisted mind and as an all-knowing entity, calling himself this time, Happy Chaos. I will talk more about his name's origin and how he came back to Guilty Gear Universe when I make a video about either Eno or Happy Chaos, so all you need to know is that the original is back from the body of Ariel's and willing to support Eno for her cause, to see how humanity, how his student Asuka would do. With Ino and Happy Chaos releasing the Nightless Samurai Nagoryuki and then Ino getting captured on purpose, Soul Bad Guy also arrives at the White House, intending to protect the Tome of Origin and the US President Vernon. There we see Asuka and Soul talking briefly and how Asuka rejects his previous nicknames and vows that he will no longer push the responsibility for his own actions and presence in this world onto everyone else. This statement of Asuka probably pleased Sol so much that he stops targeting Asuka like he used to. Soon afterwards, G4 begins as Asuka acting as the moderator between the world leaders and starts telling the representatives of his final venture as a scientist, a world peace experiment. However, just around that time, Happy Chaos takes control of the White House and the conference room requesting Asuka's tone for the exchange of the hostages. Just at that time, Asuka wonders about the magical abilities of Happy Chaos and his name. After Chaos activates the White House's Tinanog mode, Asuka realizes who he actually is. 
White House's Tinanok mode is a relic from the Crusades that literally turns the White House into a flying fortress capable for wars. Asuka warns Sol that Chaos is his former teacher, the original, and in turn, Sol tells Asuka that Chaos's goal is to make Ino complete. As Sol, Asuka and Vernon trying to evacuate from the White House, Asuka vows to fight off his teacher as well, trying to buy Sol and Vernon time by trying to take the controls of the aircraft by magic, just like Happy Chaos wanted to. And after hundreds of years, the mentor and the student clash in a magical battle, and although Asuka surprised Happy Chaos with his magical abilities, Chaos reveals himself to be Ino's other half and knocks Asuka unconscious. Just as Sol and Vernon arrive at the escape pods, Chaos takes Asuka's form and enters the room, only to find that Asuka deceived him with a projection and then get ejected to God knows where. For a brief moment, they think they are safe as Kai and Jekko also arrive to the White House. With Happy Chaos gone, it was only Sol and Asuka left for a decisive battle. Asuka announces that he will use Tinanok to travel to the moon to keep the tomb safe, However, first, he reminds Vernon what his other goal was, to destroy Soul Bad Guy. Quickly grabbing Soul Bad Guy by his neck, Asuka gives him two choices. One, Asuka would remove the flame of corruption, taking his gear powers and turning him into human once again. Or, Soul will keep his powers and kill Asuka and have his long awaited revenge. And Soul chooses the former. The world's strongest gear, Sol Bad Guy, dies on that day and Frederick Bulsara was came back to life. However, this is Guilty Gear and this is much of a happy ending, or shall I say happy chaos, and what a surprise, Chaos was still on board, manages to open the tomb from within Asuka and restoring Ino to Godhood at his own expense. Easily defeating everyone, Ino uses Asuka to start a process that will grant her powers to humanity, likely destroying the current world. However, with Kai, Sol, Axel and Nagoriki's effort, they defeat Ino, seemingly killed by Sol. With crisis averted, Asuka takes Tinanok to Moon, where he hosts a radio show and shares about Backyard and Tom's knowledge to humans to make the world a better place. And this is it. This is the story of Oscar Kreutz, the gear maker, creator of justice, the devil or misunderstood scientist, whatever you like to call him. But since even Frederick forgave him, I guess nobody else would hate him for what happened, right? And two years after the launch of Guilty Gear Strife, Oscar Kreutz joined the roster with his magical abilities and technical gameplay, different from the other Guilty Gear Strife characters he has like a mana pool this time different card decks full of different magic and a really good set play moves that make him a fun and a challenging character to play. As we journey through the incredible tapestry of Oscar Crow's life, we uncover a story of profound depth and complexity. From a visionary scientist to a guilt-ridden man seeking redemption, Asuka's journey is one of a transformation, repentance and resolve. His influence stretches far and wide in the Guilty Gear universe, his actions molding his narrative, his story influencing its characters, he is not a merely character in a tale but a driving force of the story itself. And I hope this video also unraveled a bit of Guilty Gear's origin story as well. I will talk again, I will talk more detailed about the backyard, the universal will, when I make a video about Soul Bad Guy, Eno and Happy Chaos as well. So don't worry if there are still some pieces that don't fit. As always, thank you for watching today's video and I hope you really enjoyed it. There will be more Guilty Gear character videos in the future, there will be more fighting game character videos in the future and I might even take this video concept into other genres as well. I will see you soon, take care and cheers. Yeah.
Yeah.